let's uh, let's let's get started. I'm glad I'm glad that everybody's here. I'm glad that John is here. Um, I I think you know one of the reasons why I have John. This is probably the I don't know third or fourth time that we've done this. Um, both in a live setting and in a in a somewhat virtual live setting in a like a webinar, um, and and John is you know I like working with people that are the real deal that are doing it every day. I like to bring you guys stuff that's working right now, right this moment, um, as we are talking. Everything that you're going to see that John is going to talk about is actually happening in real time, you know, behind the scenes while John is here with us. Um, so we're going to talk about sales presentations and how the right sales presentation can boost your sales, help you build a winning sales team and free you up to grow your business. You know, the last part there for me is really the big piece because you know, John will be when you when you hear John's story. I mean, he's he's going to be the first one to tell you um, that it took him a long time to figure out that last piece, how to get himself freed up so that he can go and build his company. And in just in the last three years, so you've been in, you were in business for you've been in business for how long with Carefree? Uh, Seventeen years. 17 years. So it took him like 14 years to figure it out. <laughs> so when people yeah. so people come to you probably, you know, and they see what you're doing now and they see how successful you are now. They come and they say, "Oh man, you you know, overnight success." And oh, it's uh, yeah, but it's it took like, you know, it took a long time of uh not getting it to have something finally click one day and say, "All right, I got to do things a little bit a little bit different. So anyway, Actually, so, totally <laughs> what? Just just before the transformation, I almost sold. <laughs> you almost sold. Yeah, you had to get out. Well, that's what happens. You get so damn tired. My, you know, I, I'm. I know somebody right now that's in that situation. They they yeah. they've got they got a good business, but it's you know it's kind of all them, and they're tired. Makes a lot of money, but he wants to sell. He wants to get out, and. Um, if he if he was able to do some of the things, his business is a little bit different than than this business. But still, if he was to do some of the things that we were going to talk about here today, um, you know, maybe he wouldn't want to sell. Right. So anyway, um, all right. So let's go. Let's go. Let's. Uh, what are we going to talk about here? So we're going to talk about how to implement a sales process that's uh, you know fun for your veteran salespeople and easier to train and understand for new salespeople it, this is really all about how do we create predictable results how do we create a process and a system that will give you a predictable result um, on this practical sales side of it how are we going to close more orders at higher dollar amounts so that you make more money it's one thing to just, you know, turn business and turn money. It's another thing to actually make money out of it. And that's why we're all in business. We should all be in business to make money. Um, how to differentiate yourself um, from others. And the most important thing really is, you know, how are you going to stop working in your business, working harder and longer than you have to, um, and then start working on your business so that you can really, so that you can really grow it. So, um, you know, this, there's that, that saying, if you do what you've always done, um, you'll get what you've always gotten. I don't, I don't think me and John don't really kind of believe in that. Um, I think a lot of practical salespeople don't believe in that, especially in this day and age. Might have been true 20 years ago, but definitely not today. If you are still doing the same things that you're doing now that you did a year ago and you continue doing those things, um, chances are good that over time you're not going to get the same results, you're going to get less results, right? And so we've got to really be 
you know, pushing forward. We've always got to be growing. If we're not growing, we're going to be, you know, pulling back. So um, one of the reasons why, and one of the things I really admire most about John is if you guys see this picture, the third one down on the right, that's about the time that I first met John. And um, I, I always say I think he's one of the best um, in-home sales people that, that I've ever met. Um, but that was both a blessing and a curse for John because for 14 years, that's, uh, he went out and he sold. He sold because that's what he knew how to do. Um, but he always kind of, you know, he, 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 it was hard for him to break out of that, of going and selling and running leads, running leads, running leads. And, um, that got in the way of him building his business. And to his credit, he realized that. And, um, he said, well, I, I'm going to have to do something a little bit different here. Now, when I first met John, he was actually doing some sales training, which was a little ironic back then because he, he was a damn good salesperson. He could help people how to close, close deals. But I mean, you'll hear his story. Uh, he was having a hard time hiring and keeping salespeople. So he was running leads, but he was also, you know, helping other people with how to close more sales. Um, so anyway, we're gonna hear we're gonna hear about John's story as soon as I, I pass it over to him. But I I just you know the most important thing for me when I bring you people and I bring you resources is I want to bring you people that are doing it. They're in the business. They're here, and we can learn from experience, not from you know an idea or a thought or oh hey wouldn't it be nice if this guy you know this guy's the real deal. He's doing it every day. So what you're gonna see today is you're going to learn a little bit about his story, but, but really what he's going to show you is how he did it, how he did it, how he, how he went from, you know, essentially a one man show to, um, and he'll give you his numbers. Now they're changing so fast. I can't keep up with them. Um, but how basically he works one day a week now and uh, business makes more money than it's ever made. And it's growing like, um, like gangbusters. And, um, and then he's also going to introduce you to his very, um, you know, unique, very successful selling system. So, John, I think I will be quiet now and uh, move it over to you. Um, I will say this um, for everybody, uh, it's everybody that's on. If you have questions, um, I'm going to be watching the question box. Just go in and um, type your questions into the, the question box and we will make sure to get all of your questions answered. So with that, I, uh, I'll turn it over to you, John. Thank you, Brian, and thank you for everybody who's attending. Uh, I appreciate your, your kind words, and like Brian mentioned, what I want to do is share a little bit of my story. Um, I hope it comes across in a helpful manner, because I'm certainly not trying to go look at what I've done. But as Brian said, I've been in this business for a super long time and uh, went through a lot of struggles. Business ownership didn't come natural to me. And Brian actually kind of helped me with that because I learned, you know, I read all these books and I had this information about what to do and implementing it is a whole different story. And when I first met Brian, he kind of, I didn't understand it at the time, but it's not a business if it doesn't run on its own and you could actually you know, move away from it. It's a job. And I got to admit, I did not like it when he said that. But it wasn't until I realized that he was right where, all right, well, what do we got to do to move in that direction? So again, I want to share with you what I've done and hopefully, um, you know, this will help. So as Brian mentioned, in 2013, um, I ran 266 appointments and, uh, you know, we were doing some our exterior we were doing, but we also started getting involved in, this, in, in bathrooms at that point. And out of 266 appointments, I closed almost 44% of issued. Uh, I closed about, what, almost 60%, 58% of my presentations. And I had an NSLI of $2,974. That means every time I left my office, and for those of you who don't know NSLI, 
You divide your net sales into the leads you run to find out exactly what revenue you're bringing in every time you run an appointment. So if salespeople are watching this, you don't just get paid on the sales you make. So if you have a $2,900 NSLI and you're at a 10% commission, you're really making $297 every time you leave the house. The higher that number, the more you get paid each time you leave your home and the less the lower it is, the less you make. So what I was able to show is I could sell. Now, you know, why wasn't I running 400 leads? Because I also had to oversee lead generation. I had to oversee confirmations. I had to troubleshoot. So, you know, even if I had that taken care of and all I had to do was run appointments, there are only so many leads if you're a running owner, you can run in a day. And that literally caps your earning potential. And if you don't have systems everywhere else, which a lot of us don't, and I didn't, there's only so many leads you can run if you're, if you're trying to run the business. Um, and basically what happened was the rest of my company, we ran a total of 30, 337 to my 266, okay? And uh, where I generated just shy of a million, uh, the business generated a little bit more than that. So what does that really look like? I ran 79% of the leads in 2013, yet generated 93% of the revenue. Um, my NSLI was 29.74, right? I'm a good salesperson, that's awesome. Uh, but the rest of the company was $801. Now, on average, I think they said last year, I think we were at 350-ish. But on average, uh, it's three hundred and seventy-five dollars to issue an appointment. So I'm, you know, I'm not saying I'm breaking even, but how much money am I really making there? And how much effort did I have to expel to train people on top of the leads I was running to make a little bit more? I mean, you're doing a lot more work and you're getting a little bit more revenue, and we don't always realize that that's the case. So I didn't own a business; I owned a job. I mean, that's the reality of it. It's hard medicine, but you got to take it. Um, my story from 2007 to 13, uh, I had an employee that worked for us in the marketing department who happened to know how to do PowerPoint presentations. So I decided that I would pull him off the phone, pull him off of lead confirmations, off of lead generation, sit over his shoulder, no, nope, move that there, do, no, nope, over there, and how much time did that take for me off the road? How much time did it take him off of our schedule? So after all was said and done, I paid a crap ton of money when you look at what I was paying him for salary. It took me six months to finally complete while I'm in a home trying to troubleshoot it. In 2009, I figured, all right, I got to get better results. So let me sit in front of a computer and type out every single thing I do. Then I can teach people exactly what I do. I had a document the size of a telephone book times two. That, and I'm looking at that like, how the hell can I train someone to do what I do? especially when a lot of what I do is visceral, you know, from the gut. So from there, I began, uh, I remember we're on a trip to Puerto Rico. I think it was 2011. And on the flight to Puerto Rico, my wife showed me how to do PowerPoint because it got very difficult when that employee didn't work here anymore, didn't know how to do PowerPoint. And then now what do you do? Well, that presentation sat there collecting dust until I can figure out the next move. So learning how to do PowerPoint, uh, I started to put my own presentations together, which it took me about a good year to learn it and get everything updated with all the different products we offered. So that took a lot of time. And when did I do that? I did that when I wasn't running leads, when I wasn't dealing with installations, when I wasn't dealing with marketing, etc. cetera. Um, I learned how to do iPad. Uh, and I think Brian was the guy that introduced me to iPad in 11. So I finally got it figured out and now I got to learn an iPad. So there's more uh, that I have to figure out. So over the next few years, what I did was I took that presentation, I took that system, I brought it into a home, and I found myself figuring out, okay, I know this close, I can perform this close, I can perform this miracle, but I left every home now thinking, could I really teach somebody else to do that, or is that just I'm good at what I do? So I began refining and cutting the fat. You know, this is something that I did, but I don't know that that's trainable. But what do I do that's trainable? Or how could I take that complicated uh, close or, or, or uh, objection? How do I simplify it so I can teach it? So I spent many years in the field doing that. And I want to say, I scared a crap ton of salespeople. I was able to leave a home and a salesperson or recruit would go, damn, you're incredible, but I could never do that. So if the goal was to show that salesperson how great I was, mission accomplished, but the goal was really 
to make him say, I can do that. And that was what was lacking during those years of, of figuring it out. So let's and, flash and forward. John, hey, and John, if I could just throw in, that's not a unique situation to John. We see that we see that all over the place. As the owner of the company, if you came from a sales background or you have a sales background, you have your own magical way of closing leads. And I say magical because more than likely, it's not something you're able to go and teach to somebody else. That's how this guy was. I mean, I'd look at him and say, you know, he's funny. He's he's got comedic timing. He makes facial expressions. He does all yeah. He does all of this shit. It's like how can you can't teach somebody to do that? It's just it's something that you're born with. I can't do that. It's not me. Um, and so I think if you're one of those um, if you're one of those owners that's that's still out there running leads and struggling with well, how do I take what I do and duplicate it and train other salespeople to do it. You can't, you won't, you'll never be able to do that because they will never be able to recreate your secret sauce, your magic, you know, your magic formula. And that's what took him years to figure out. Okay. So anyway, I just, I, I wanted to, I'll be the guy that just kind of jumps in and interrupts you every once in a while. I'm going to talk about that what that magic is, frankly, is we own the business and it's called survival. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, true. A lot of times that's very true. Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you can't teach survival. You know, a lot of people would say, well, of course you do that. Or of course you worked all that extra. It's your business. Well, that's the whole thing. A lot of people that work for us don't have the same uh, desire, the same goals. And guess what? If they did, you'd call them competitors, not salespeople. Right. So that's exactly right. So, in 2015 now, I ran 31 appointments. I still closed at a high level, 54%. And my NSLI was about 2,900 bucks. Okay, and given that bathrooms were a newer product for us, I was running a lot of those because we were troubleshooting a new product. When your average order is eight. When I was doing all exterior, I was usually around $4,000 NSLI, but with an average sale at the time of six, seven grand, now we're up much more than that, um, it was $2,900. So what does that uh, mean for the rest of the company? Well, we ended up issuing 722 leads other than me, and we ended up with a um, company-wide NSLI of $2,600 instead of the 800 from 2013. But the thing that I was most proud of is we actually had a hell of a year from where I was before, the hamster on the wheel, and only running 31 appointments. So if you take a snapshot, that means I ran 4% of the leads in 15 compared to 79% in 13. That means I produced 5% of the revenue in 15 compared to 93% in 13. Yet revenue was up 45%. Okay, my NSLI was 2,900 bucks, so I guess I could still sell. But guess what? There's only so many leads the master can, can run, right? You're, if you're a master in your business, there's only so many appointments you can run, and that, that quantity caps your growth if you don't figure something out. So again, mine was 2,900. The rest of my team was $2,600 instead of $801. So I finally own a business. And as I said before, I think there was a point in – uh, early 15, I was made an offer. And as Brian said, mostly on referral, I could close. And I told people, I'm not going to help you grow your business because what right do I have to, you know, I'm not growing my own. But I can show you how to close an order. I can show you how to be more profitable. I can show you how to dramatically reduce rescissions, bring up closing percentages, bring up NSLIs. So I was going to basically go live with Brian. I was going to go to Florida, sell the business. I can't, you know, I'm not a natural leader. I'm not a natural business owner. I was burning out fast. I was very frustrated. Um, thank God I didn't, right? So how did we finish 2016? Now I want to make a point on here too. In 2016, now I have a replicatable process. Now I have more confidence recruiting. Now I don't get held hostage by my salespeople. This is how we do business here. Now I want to spend a little bit of time on that. The guy at the very top had a, this is his first month. He sold insurance. He never did this before. 
but he had behaviors adaptable to the business and he closed $68,000 with an average sale of about $7,500. His NSLI was $1,747. Guess what? He was bucking the system. He, it took me 45 minutes to say, listen, you did great here. The prop, what, I, what we need you to do, and I didn't have 45 minutes. So to quote my top producer, the juice wasn't worth the squeeze. You know, the volume that he generated was too much work to generate. So it ended up not working out. And I have no problem with that. Okay, this one here, Eric, he was phenomenal. He came in uh, middle of 2014, no, middle of 2015, I think July of 15, he stayed until August. Why? He came from California, he was a top producer, he was great to work with, but after a year in Connecticut, his wife didn't like Connecticut, they wanted to move back to California. Now I'm going to ask people out in the audience, how many of you could lose a million dollar producer and still maintain, if not grow, without you having to go back on the road. And that's what I mean when I say taken hostage by your salespeople. Well, I want to say this because I think it'll help his growth and I think it'll help our installation team because this particular person is not saying what they're supposed to say. Well, I don't want to upset them because they don't have to run more leads. You get into that anybody but me mentality. You're abdicating sales to somebody else. So with my point is, is learning and implementing this process, and I shouldn't say learning, but for us, you know, cutting the fat, trimming the fat, having a replicatable process, I no longer am held hostage by salespeople. I'm not saying we're, we're, we're um, tyrants here, because we're not, but we do have a, this is how we do things here. We implement it right in the beginning, and we're consistent and transparent. Transparent means this is how we do it. Consistent means... From the beginning, uh -uh, this is this is what we and eventually people get into their lanes. Okay, and again, last year we had uh, I think four salespeople we brought on on top of our top producers that we had. Um, a couple of them worked out, a couple of them didn't. But I want to show you this number down here, guys. Okay, even with four salespeople that didn't work out, the company's NSLI was twenty seven hundred dollars. And I have clients and friends in the business that say I kill to have a $1,750 NSLI, and you let them go. You know, you gotta run your business the way you gotta run your business, but what I'm saying is, I'm no longer held hostage. So last year, I ran 2% of the leads in 16, compared to 4% in 15, compared to 79% uh, in 13. I generated 3% of revenue last year in 16, compared to 5% in 15, and 93% in 13, my NSLI last year, guys, was $39.76. Why? Hey, you probably cherry pick leads. You're damn right I did. I'm running the business. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, I'm running the business, right? So if I'm going to grow the business, if I'm going to leave my nice, I don't know if you guys can see my nice leather chair, I'm going to leave my leather chair and I'm going to go out and I'm going to go run an appointment and make X dollars, or I can stay in my office and I can work out the next BJ's club the next product, the next lead source. So if I'm going to leave my office, guess what? When the salespeople I had left and there was add-on business or there was a rehash or a referral, I never take them from the people who are still here. Well, I'm not going to give that to, to, to other sales guys. I want them to go out and run the leads that we're paying for. So my NSLI went up. So the few leads I ran, I make more money. Yet the rest of the company continued to do well. All right? So... My sales team's NSLI was 2,603 and 15. It was 2,710. Why? Brian said uh, perfectly, learn a process that's replicatable so you can make more money. Well, guess what? When your team, ha you have a, a consistent team, plus you have, you're still going to have that revolving door. It's the nature of the beast. But when you look at your numbers overall and you're producing consistent results, you can then say, I think our closing ratio is too high. Why don't we raise up the prices a little bit and see how, how the numbers work? By following this process, I have raised my prices four times in the last four years, $500 on an average job in a clip. So we're basically $2,000 more per job than we were at about three, four years ago, and our numbers haven't changed. Now, that doesn't mean that eventually we're going to raise them a million dollars because it's not the price, it's the perception of value. But what I'm getting at is my NSLI is up for a bunch of reasons. Not only do I have replicatable results, but I'm able to raise my prices because I have a system to follow, and I can now manage the numbers to make sure we're maximizing every opportunity. Now, 17, 
my million dollar producer went to California and we replaced them. We got two new salespeople. Okay. These are our numbers down here. Okay. So uh, this is the sales team that I have. I want to show you this. This is the two new guys I brought on board. We brought four people on this year. Two people did not graduate sales training. We have standards here. We do a, we're doing a much better job recruiting. We're doing a much better job bringing the right people in. That's one of the things that I'm able to do working on the business. But the two people that we brought on don't have home improvement experience, and they have a $2,100 NSLI combined. One's been here for three months. One's been here for four months. So what is the point to all this? Here's my dashboard. Last year at this time, we were at 1.9 net. This year, we're at 2.4. Now, I'm not here to say... You know, you, some people out there might be watching, yeah, I'm doing 8 million, that's nothing. But what I'm saying, not that 8 million, 10 million is not awesome. But what I'm asking is, what kind of effort are you putting in to generate those types of results? Because I learned an expression that there's volume for vanity and profits for sanity. Off of this webinar, I'll share with you what my profits are um, on the number, on, on the volume that we're doing. So we're on pace right now to go over $4 million, which is a 28% growth over this time last year, not only have I not run a single appointment, but I lost a million dollar producer. So think about that. And, now, and he'll make yes. and he'll make more money. He'll make more money on four million than a lot of companies will make on 10, 15, even maybe some companies with 20. So um, it's about the number at the end not so much the number at the top. That's that's one thing. The other point that I want um, that that I want to point out here is John had because he's a, because he's a salesperson and because of his um, I guess for lack of a better way of just his personality. He's a real he's kind of a hard driving guy. He had a really hard time getting salespeople, like really hard time. The first time I went to his office and I saw how he was interacting with salespeople, it was like confrontational. It was not good. So they didn't stay. He couldn't keep people around. Now, because of a process, and it's not only, it's not only him. If you look at the most successful companies out there in this business, and you'll see the same things that you'll see that you're seeing at John's place is if you you can bring people in they're not all going to work out you cannot base your life on just that one sale okay I finally found that one salesperson I've made this mistake a, a number of times you have to bring like he did he brought in four people you got to do the same thing but now he's got a system where he's training them all on the exact same thing. This is exactly how it is. I don't care about your personality. I don't care about your, your if you think you have a secret sauce or whatever, this is the system. It goes like this and like this and like this and like this and like this. At the end of that, there's gonna be a result. If that result is between here and here, you stay. If that result is not between here and here, we maybe will take another shot at you and retrain you, or you got to go because it's not going to work out. Right? That's kind of how it works, right? It's worth the squeeze, and the beauty of that is, is that, again, what I'm going to talk about right now is what I call the one-day work week, and I want to be clear on this. The one-day work week is what I work, on the, uh, work in the business. So what I do on Wednesdays is I meet at 10 o'clock, with my installation manager and we find you know we have by the way we have a process for that too with all the time I have I can work on the business there's a process in every department we meet with the installation manager intentionally because if there's a particular salesperson who's saying things he's not supposed to say and made the installation uh, department a nightmare guess what I meet with salespeople at 11 o'clock so I can make sure that that we address that before it becomes a habit okay then at 1 o'clock, I meet with my marketing and events manager who does shows and events and BJs. Why? Because I'm going to talk to my sales team about what they're hearing. And although there are lead babies out there, I've been doing this long enough where I know what's a legitimate complaint and what's not. I know how to read the numbers to determine what my marketing team is doing. 
So if there's a particular situation which we were faced with that uh, it, it didn't fit our no need, no lead, lead generation process, I learned that. I was able to stuff that out in my one o'clock meeting. Then after meeting with marketing, I meet at three o'clock with the office manager, and then from there, guess what? You know, what, whatever. <laughs> so what do I do with the time that I have? A uh, couple of things. One, I have I make my own hours. Uh, generally, I take eight vacation weeks. Last year, we went away eight weeks. Uh, we skipped winter. I hate the winter, and we discovered that you know we have no debt. So rather than buy a, a beach house and you know watch the news or sit around lounging, we figured it's cheaper to travel than it is to get another house. So we skipped winter. We're out four weeks in, in the first quarter, so we don't have to bother with snow and cold weather. Uh, money, zero debt business, zero debt personally. Um, I gotta tell you, man, I always said to my wife, if I could be Tom Brady, I'm a Patriots fan, those guys get contracts where they don't have to worry about money, right? Why? Because all they gotta do is focus on football. I said to my wife a few years ago, if I could get to the point where money wasn't an issue, and all I had to focus on was business. Oh my God, the damage I would do. Well, it, you know, it's not as quick as that, but here we are. Security, not to bring this meeting down. I lost my father in February. February is a tough month. February, a lot of people struggle with leads, right? If you're your top salesperson and it's February and you have a crisis, I'm just saying. I went down and spent about seven to 10 days in Florida. I was able to spend the last time I had uh, with my father before he, whatever. Bottom line, while I was down there taking care of business, and by the way, I'm the earner in the family. I had a financial responsibility while I was down there to take care of situations. While I'm doing that, my business is having a record February. And I'm not saying it was an awesome February compared to say March, April, May. We had a record February. I had salespeople, I had a, mar I had a marketing team, installations. I came back after seven to 10 days to find out we had a record month, what? Security is what you get. God forbid something happens, you're able to, and I said to my wife, as hard as what we're going through right now, could you imagine if we have to worry about making rent, making payroll, paying the mortgage? Okay, relationships. Call. I mean, I got to know Brian a lot more. There's a couple other people in the industry I've gotten to know that have really helped make a big difference. Brian, not just because he had me on here, but I, like I said, I, I kind of wanted to punch him in the face when he said that to me a couple years ago. But now I'm grateful because had he not given me that tough medicine, maybe we're not talking right now. And then finally, a purpose of paying it forward. You know, right now, as we speak, one of my crews is installing. Uh, a free job for a veteran, a veteran of the Korean War. He's in a wheelchair. He's got that mesothelioma. He's having a hard time getting in out of his bathroom. So we're out there doing that for free, and we're able to, you know, to give back. We've given a bunch of of, of free installations to give back to the community. I got to say that that that's awesome in and of itself. So why am I sharing this? If you didn't have to work, what would you do? If you don't work, I want to tell you something. I thought I liked to retire. No. Because if you retire and you do nothing, especially if you're a businessman, you might not necessarily like what you're doing right now, but you need to do something or you wither away and die yourself. So I don't wanna sit around and do nothing. I take vacations, I talked about all the stuff I do. With the spare time I have, I work on my business. I might spend 20 minutes putting something together that might result in an extra $300,000 worth of leads. But the other thing that I'm doing with the time that I have is I love sales training as Brian talked about. I love the fact that I've created something at my business when I almost sold it that runs on its own and it's continuing to grow, all right? Uh, the agenda for today, I'm gonna share you what took me years to formulate. I'm gonna share with you guys. Now look at it. If you guys have the ability to do it, what, right, why are you giving this to us? Look, if you can't do it, we have solutions. If you can, take some notes. If you're doing better than we're doing, I'd love to hear from you, you know? When you're green, you grow. When you're right, you rock. But I'm going to talk about how to create a process that's replicatable with the right people to grow your sales team. Okay, You're not going to be able to say, oh, it's so good you can train a monkey. Not true. You have to have people with the right characteristics. What we're going to talk about today is not a substitute to recruiting and training the right people. But you know what? i got to tell you guys, how come I have uh, multiple million-dollar producers in my company now, but in the first 13 years I didn't have but any? Is it really because I got lucky and found the right people? What are the odds that I had the right people, but I didn't know how to handle the right people? 
I mean, that's a real possibility too. Things don't happen to you. They happen because of you. They didn't happen to me. They happen because of me. So as soon as you learn that, the quicker you are on your road to uh, success. So we're going to learn how to, how to um, look more organized and professional in front of customers, how to maximize leads that you've invested so much money to generate, how to differentiate yourself to get more money, close more business, right? So if you are still using a pitch book, just saying, right, to sell home improvements, a lot of companies are out there using pitch books. The funny part is if you're a company that gets top dollar and you have somewhat of a, you go in a home and you have a one call close, let's say, what do we generally do? We sell the value of our business on how we're different, we're more reliable. But guess what? If you're using a pitch book and the person that's half your price is as well, there's only so much talking you can do to close a deal. What you do speaks so loudly, people can't hear what you're saying. So you look like that very contractor that, that we're trying to uh, get more money on that's underbidding those jobs, okay? Can I ask you how about this? You know if the hotel's patron friendly? What do you mean? I'm not getting a SIG on my beeper. I'm not sure. We're a payphone bank. Bunch of payphones. Business. Um, there's a phone in your room. That'll work. So I play this live in a group and everybody laughs. And the reason everybody laughs is because a beeper is outdated. So is a pitch book. And you know what, guys? I'm just saying, so is a laptop. A laptop is big. It's bulky. It takes a long time to heat up, to warm up. So you got to consider that as well, okay? Now, what do homeowners think when you show up to a house with a pitch book under, underneath or you have your pitch book, you have your, you know, your photo albums, et cetera? You know, I, I go to a home and, uh, let me rephrase that. I have a client in Massachusetts I'm training, and one of the salespeople said, what do you do when a half an hour in? They say they got to go somewhere. And I'm not looking to embarrass anybody, but I'm, I only know how to be transparent. I said, look, dude, i got to be honest with you. The first... From hello to that 30 minutes, something you did made them realize they didn't want to buy from you. I can't help you overcome that. Even my salespeople, in the close, I had this happen. Well, I don't handle closes anymore, which might be what Brian was talking adversarial. There's something that happened at this part of the presentation that got you that result. We need to find out why that came up in the first place, not how do I overcome doing it the wrong way. Well, the wrong way, again, is putting your salespeople in a position to get resistance because it looks like they're going to be there all night long. Same thing with pitch books, fuzzy pictures. This is a picture of this job. This is a, and as Brian said, I, I, I have some clients who are larger who are still using a pitch book. All right, so it's, it's not unique to smaller guys, okay? Oftentimes, when you go to do a presentation, this is something that we used to hear a lot years ago. I want to check references. We got that twice last year, and we laughed about it in, in the sales meetings that we discovered we got them. The way we do what we do, we have dramatically reduced. I want to check references. By the way, there are two reasons people give you not to move forward. This is worth writing down. The reason they give you and the real reason. I want to check references. And then we bark up the check references tree when they're hiding safely in the you're out of your freaking mind tree. Okay, so again, we want to make sure we uh, uh, dramatically reduce some of the resistance we're getting, and a pitch book's going to add it to you. Looking sloppy, unprofessional, overstuffed, brochures, you know, hanging out everywhere. Now, here's the part that I want to say, recruiting, because that's a huge part. Even with the clients I have, with no matter what we're talking about or training on, it's always how do you get people to, to, to work? How do you find the right people? I actually... Uh, debated on this, but I have a client in Connecticut that uh, I decided to work with, and they asked me that very question, how do you do that? Well, for starters, don't give them a pitch book the size of a telephone book to memorize with an accompanying training manual, if you even have one, and say, hey guys, take your time, it's a commissioned position, let me know when you're ready. Because when you do that, this is what happens. Well, damn it, I quit. I can't do this anymore, man. My head's about to explode. My whole life sucks. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. My dad just died. We just killed Bambi. I'm out here getting my ass kicked, and every time I drive down the road, I want to jerk the wheel in a goddamn bridge and fuck it. Like... Hey, ready for your lead today? <laughs> now, I want to point this out, too, guys. I was thinking about this. If an issued lead is $375, I want to change your thinking. 
When you give a salesperson who's unprepared an appointment, you're not giving him $375. That's what it costs. What you really are doing is losing the value. My company's NSLI is about $2,700. Even if the lead costs me $375, when a salesman shows up a half an hour late and blows the lead, he costs you $2,700, not $375. So if you take your company's average NSLI minus that guy that's giving you a trouble or, or gal that's giving you a hard time, guess what? That's how much money you're losing per appointment when we're not prepping our salespeople to be competitive. When you show up with a pitch book, your salesperson looks like every other contractor they've seen, which is why they're hearing the same results. I got to think about it. I got to check references. I'm still shopping. That's what they told, if you're the third person out, that's what they told the last guy and the guy before that. If you're the fifth person out, that's what they told the others. If they're saying the same thing, that means they're having the same response to the same thing they've already heard. Google image salesperson, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right. Now, it's time to get rid of the pitch book. And guys, again, even on your own, get an iPad. I'm going to tell you iPad for a bunch of reasons. An iPad is a much easier operating system than PowerPoint. If you're having a laptop and you're going out with that, I know everybody's company works on um, Microsoft. My company has a few computers with that. There are apps you can add. I'm saying this because I'm working right now on a Mac computer. It is so much easier to use if you want to make your own presentation than a, um, a PowerPoint. But again, you still got to know how to use a computer, so keep that in mind. Now, give your salespeople the, sale, the tools they need. Embrace technology. When I show up, when my salespeople show up, they've got a briefcase with an iPad you know, around their shoulder, and they've got an iPad in their, in their uh, bag. This is what homeowners see, right? Now, instead of that, right, this helps prospects focus on what your sales team is saying instead of having them worry about how long it's going to take to say it. There's two types of listening, guys. There's listening to understand and waiting to talk. If your prospect is wondering how much or how long it's going to take to do the presentation, they are waiting to talk. And what they do say is, can we flip that? We don't need to hear that. Can we just get on with that? We don't have to know all that. All I want is a price. That's waiting to talk, not listening to understand. If you show up with a presentation in your iPad, they're going to listen to understand because they're not preoccupied with how big the document is you want to go over with them. Now, question. If homeowners absorb more of what your salespeople say, how could it not increase business? People buy what they want. The more they absorb, the more they're going to want it, right? Another example. I just happened to mention that what we were amazed about is the uh, amount of savings that we uh, generated from our gas bill. And we took a look at the heating season between um, <clears throat> November and end of March. The year before we had the windows, our heating bill was about 1500 bucks. And this past heating season for the same period it was only 993, which is about a 40% savings in our heating bill, which we think is- Now I'm gonna give you guys a, a free close. If you guys have videos like that, here, here's a close that we use basically. And I've sold a lot of windows using this close. This is what I call psychoanalysis or a conversational approach to sales. Okay, This customer lives in Glastonbury, Connecticut. You live in New Britain, Connecticut. Can we agree that you're in the same climate? Yeah. And more or less, are you paying the same amount of money for energy costs? You're in the same state. Customer said, yeah. So if I put the same windows in your house that I put in their house, what are the odds you get the same results? Pre pretty darn good. People buy what they want. That's another. That's a, that's a topic for another webinar. But that's how I, I would use something like that. Okay. Our clients are the best salespeople in our company. They're always on script, and you don't have to pay them commission. Why not harness them and put them in in your iPad? Okay. Build their dream house on design apps. That's another reason I like iPads instead of computers because most factories that we buy from have a design app. Our presentation oftentimes is intellectual information to justify an emotional purchase. If you're not using an iPad with a design app, you are not maximizing the emotional portion of this purchase or investment. All right, so that's another reason that you want to get involved in an iPad. Now, uh, also what we do in our presentation is we link it. So on our iPad, we can actually tap the logo and it takes us right to our Facebook page live. Tap the A plus Better Business Bureau and it takes us right to that live. Okay, so anything you can hyperlink with just a tap, you're there. Now, how do you use that? 
I do a company story one time. Homeowner says, I, I go through the company story and I have a pre-close. When the time comes to have this project installed, based on credentials, would you feel comfortable working with our company? His response, well, I'm going to have to check it out for myself. My response, you mean like this? And I tapped it. Boom. BBB. He looks at it and goes, he, he, yeah, great. So now that you know what I said is accurate, when the time comes to have, and again, I'm a little smoother when I'm in a home. Right now we're in webinar mode. But this is how we're using a lot of these. You can dramatically reduce the I want to check references objection when you can click Google and show them your 30 reviews. And if you don't have them, you better get them. So that being said, iPads have countless apps, Zillow, product designs, calculators, finance payments. Uh, you can link directly to your YouTube videos, cameras, all that kind of stuff. And again, much better than a laptop and a hell of a lot better than a pitch book. So instead of intimidating new hires, okay, with ridiculously large training manuals, with an iPad, you can embed it into each slide. So if you look on the left here, this is a slide, right? This is what I want you to say on that slide. When you're training a salesperson and you hook this up to the big TV and you say, okay, Jim, what do we say on this slide? And uh, 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 you know he's not on the system. When I train a salesperson and I choose a slide and I role play the slide, I say, now, Jim, let me ask you a question. If you were my manager, I put the notes on the big TV. Read that for me. Did I say that? And Jim goes, yeah, you, you did. So if you were my manager, am I on the system or am I off the system? Well, you're on the system. Okay, how come you don't know it? Or, you know, however you decide you want to manage your people. The bottom line is this allows you to lead by example, whether you have a sales manager or you're on the road yourself, but you have it in writing. Instead of a separate pitch book and a separate manual, it's all built in. Even your salesperson sees this as opposed to this. And we all know perception is reality. Guys, it's the same amount of information, but perception is reality. This looks a lot cooler and easier to understand. Okay, so this is, this is what we, we say. Which method looks less intimidating to do salespeople? Okay, so what are your options? Okay, you can keep doing what you're doing and hope to get the same results. As Brian said, and I believe you both learned that from Tim Mush at Market Sharp, uh, you get less. You do what you've always done. You get what you always got. Eh, nowadays, you're going to get less. So you can, you can continue that or... You can create one on your own. Again, if you guys have someone in your office that can do it, go for it. Just keep this in mind. How much does it really cost? Right? If you have someone in marketing or someone in administration that doesn't know the home improvement business, you have an NSLI at your company of $3,000, okay? which means every time you spend three hours with a homeowner, you're generating $3,000. And if your profitability is 50%, that means you're generating $1,500. So if you sit over the shoulder of your admin person, not only is it costing you what it costs to, to have her work on that or him instead of something else, it's costing you $1,500 every three hours-ish. Or however the NSLI works out. I might have overstated that, but math is not my strong suit unless I have a calculator in front of me. So anyway, that's the point I'm making. That's how much it costs. But if you can do it and you're willing to do what I did and spend six years figuring it out, you got to do it. Because looking back, was it worth it? Oh, God, was it worth it? You can also pay computer geeks, but the same process, guys. If you've ever built a website, we have a great company that builds websites, but if they don't have home improvement experience, how are they going to know what to put in? Then you're going to get a draft. No, change that to this, change that to that, change this to that, change that. I mean, again, it's, it's time, it's money, and it's also the amount of time you're wasting implementing the process. If you think this process works, when's the best time to implement it? Now we're in a year or six years like what it took me. All right, the other thing I would say is some of our factories do have high-tech apps. I work with a manufacturer who has a phenomenal app. Um, but I gotta ask you guys, is it the high-tech aspect of that app or presentation that sells jobs, right? Or is it the content? Because a lot of these factory apps are factory-centric. They don't have your company story. If you price condition, I'm sure for legal reasons, they can't put somebody's competition estimate in there. So now you've got that presentation, and hold on a minute, and get out of that and go into the next and do your price. I mean, it, it gets very complicated. It's better than a pitch book, but I'm just saying. Okay? So my company, Carefree, we're not the only ones using this presentation. We've got a lot of clients throughout the country. 
Um, again, if this is something you could do yourself, I highly recommend you do it. I'm not intending this to be a hard pitch here, but I'm just saying um, this is something that we've implemented for our clients, usually within 30 days, depending on the volume that we have at that time. We've even worked with Progressive Foam, who's a major manufacturer. Um, the success that uh, I've had with Carefree, I've been able to create these presentations, and up until recently, they've all been on a referral basis. So I guess our clients are satisfied with them. Um, unlike most sales trainers, I want to point this out. I think, it, like I said, when you're green, you grow. When you're ripe, you rot. I learned from a lot of industry trainers. I got a lot of information reading books, etc. But the thing is, as Brian said, times change, and it's not often the material that changes, but the manner in which we deliver it. Unlike most sales trainers, I actually have a successful business that we're double-digit growth. Uh, we're in our fourth, third or fourth year in a row. So I actually have a company. So when I share with my clients, I'm sharing what I'm doing. And my valid clients is if I'm not doing it successfully, I'm not taking the gig. If I can't help you accomplish what you're trying to, like if I'm not doing it myself, I'll do my best to say, hey, maybe they can or whatever. But at the end of the day, I share what works now, not what works 40 years ago, the same regurgitated information over and over. Okay, so custom iPad presentations, uh, if you sell consistently in home improvements, if you want to sell consistently, again, write this down. Three questions you have to help your homeowner answer if you want to write business. Why choose your company? Why us? Second one, why the product? Why is your product better than everybody else's? Why should I buy your product regardless of what else is on the market, right? And the final one is why not? Now, we do a one-call close, right? We're, we, we're a velvet hammer. We're not high pressure. It's a conversational approach to sales, which is another reason salespeople like working here. We're aggressive. We're just not pushy. We're persistent. We're just not rude, okay? But why not? When your representative says, hey, listen, I couldn't sell because they wanted to shop, which of those whys is lacking? And if you have a salesperson that calls in that same result, wanted to shop, wanted to shop, wanted to shop, wanted to shop, well, you know that's probably why your product. You know, that's why you couldn't close the order because you didn't want them, you didn't get them to want your product regardless of what else is on the market. So if you're a sales manager, you know exactly what to focus on now, especially if you have a process. And that could also be why now. It's very possible that people love your product. You've got an amazing product, but I have to see what else is out there. It could also be why now. So start to look at your results, and you can put them in one of those three categories as to why that representative isn't closing, and it can help you focus in on what to talk about in that sales meeting instead of, oh, boy, here comes another meeting where he blathers on about everything, telling us nothing. I don't necessarily want to have sales meetings, but if I have them, I want to make sure that if you are going to have to attend one, I want to make sure mine's one they want to attend. So how do you help homeowners answer these questions? Well, the way I do it at Carefree, we have what we call the Angles Angle on Sales. We actually call it at Carefree, uh, the Carefree uh, sales presentation here, um, selling system. But this is ours. And if you look at these headings, guys, it's not a lot different than what you see because you know what? The anchors... The pillars of salesmanship haven't changed. What has changed is how you deliver the information. It's a different client base right now. We're learning that by 2020, millennials will have more buying power than baby boomers. So you've got to learn how to deliver the information. The needs and wants haven't changed. The delivery has, and I think we've done a good job keeping up with the times. Why your company? Well, that's where an iPad presentation comes in. If you take your company credentials on your iPad and you tap the screen, and that's our better business, and you tap the screen, that's how you do your company story, okay? Now, one of the things that we do to make sure we eliminate those objections at the end is we have a strategic color code combination. One of the colors we have is yellow. When a yellow starburst comes up, that tells the salesperson, don't go to the next topic, qualify that that's important. So when I do my company story, I'm able to come back in and say, so guys, we're family owned and operated over the last, and remember, I went through each and every one of these individually, but now we're at the end of my five, 10 minute company uh, story, company credentials. So we're family owned and operated, we're one of qualified or models, top 500 companies, right? Hey Sandra, you went and changed the baby at this point, but we're fully licensed and insured, right? We have an A plus better business bureau rating, we're all over in publications, top 20 dealer in the country, and Fred, when you went to take that business call, you missed out on the fact that we're active in the community, we donate to this, we donate to that. So let me ask you a question. 
when the time comes to actually make this improvement on your home based on credentials, would you feel comfortable working with our company? Right? And the homeowner has to say, yeah. And if they don't say yes, you have an opportunity to rephrase and redirect it so you don't carry that baggage to the close because whether you overcome it now or later, it's going to have to be overcome. Let's overcome it now. And that's what these iPad presentations can do if they're set up properly. Now, the next one, why choose our product? Well, again, guys, if you have a pitch book and you kind of you know, go in with a brochure and you let your salespeople just kind of ramble about what they think, you know, even if you train your people, right? If you are consistent in your messaging, you want to control what they say. You want them to deliver it in a way that's comfortable for them and their personality, but you've got to make sure you script what you want them to say. If you go to McDonald's and you say, listen, I don't want special sauce on my Big Mac. Uh, I want ketchup and mustard. They're going to go, oh, no, 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 have it your way is Burger King, right? They're gonna let you go to Burger King, but I have a question for you guys. Who's got the more successful franchise, McDonald's or Burger King? Have it your way or have it our way? I'd rather have it our way if it works. I wanna be like McDonald's in that way. So what happens is our process, anything in green is positive. Zig Ziglar, I, I think he's great, or he was great. He said sales is a transfer of evil. So if your salespeople are delivering the information, the good and the bad in the same tone, you're missing out on a whole level of understanding from your homeowner. When I train my salesperson, whenever you see green, you're pumped up. Here's what we have. We use Diamond Deck because what Diamond Deck does, blah, blah, blah. Then, see, the problem is, and if you see my face, I teach this to my salespeople. See, a lot of people go with the standard 15-pound felt paper, but what they don't realize, and a lot of contractors don't tell them, is organic felt crumbles over time. It tears easily during installation, and what that does is it ends up voiding the warranty, creating many problems later. So here's a pre-close. Let me ask you guys a question. Knowing the difference between Diamond Deck and Standard Felt for pricing purposes, when the time comes to re-roof, which, which one do you think you want? And if you notice, I make that talk show whole face. I'm all in. I want to know what you think. I'm not acting like it's a foregone conclusion. You see why we use Diamond Deck? That's what everybody does. What, what do you do? I mean, what, 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 no, now that you know the differences, which do you think is going to make the most sense? When the homeowner says, oh, I don't want diamond deck, I don't want that crap, what are they saying? You have my permission to charge me more. That's really what they're saying. But if you don't have a consistent message, you cannot get replicatable results. Therefore, you will be held hostage by your top producers who don't know what they're doing because like you, they're winging it. And I don't mean that in an offensive way. I'm talking about Brian talking about that secret sauce that makes us owners. We don't have a necessarily a scripted way we do it. We just do it and it works. I'm telling you, those salespeople are not only holding you hostage while they're working for you, they are also going to become your competitors and do the same thing that you're doing right now unless there's a way to get replicatable results. Same thing here. Green is positive. We get excited about it, et cetera, et cetera. Now, last part about why our company. Once you go through your process, whether it's windows or siding or stucco or bathrooms, and you go through, here's what we have, green. You know, guys, you could save a couple of dollars if you go with red, and then yellow comes up and you go, so now that you know, what do you think? This way I know how to price it. If you do this the right way, your homeowner is going to choose the better features. Listen, our whole system, they're going to choose them every time. Just the iPad presentation in itself, you're going to get more people saying, yeah, I want the better. I want the better. And in that way, that's how you successfully price condition to eliminate, I want to shop around, rephrase, dramatically reduce, not eliminate. So I go through the presentation. Uh, they're excited. They're pumped up. I do the same thing with company stories. So guys, can I ask you a question? When the time comes to actually have your roof installed based on the certainty roofing system or based on XYZ bath system? Do you like this, this system? I mean, if it was made affordable, would you have it installed? Do you like it? Does it do what you want it to do? Number of questions, but you're going to get a commitment. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if I can afford it, but it looks, looks damn good to me. And that's what I used to hear on the road. That's why I was good at my job. I don't know if I can afford it, but yeah, that's a hell of a great product. And that's where clo you know, we'll, we'll learn how to close it later on. But this is how you get the same replicatable results on a regular basis. Okay. Why now? That's step nine of 10. You know, we have our own why now, we have our button ups, etc. But why now is why should you do it now? What is Black Friday all about? 
right? Come in at 4 o'clock in the morning, and the first 10 people that walk in the door, there are riots for people to go buy crap that they would otherwise not buy if not for the fact that it was, you know, on sale. So it works if you know how to deliver it properly, and that's what we do here. But in essence, if you want people to buy what you're selling, they have to want it. The more they want it, the easier it is to sell them. And that's the purpose of putting together a presentation that, that gets this, the, the predictable results so that you can replicate it as you grow your sales team. All right, so why introduce it? It's a turnkey operation, guys. I, listen, I'm, I'm going to say this again. I wasn't sure I should say this previously, but it is what it is. I'm not, I, wasn't the, I wasn't born a natural leader. I'm a soldier. You know, I'm the guy in your platoon that you want. I'll go through walls for my team. I mean, for the people I work for, I, I'm, a, I'm a hard worker. But when I was a great telemarketer, when I was 19, they said, here, you go manage. Right? Then I became great at sales. Okay, go be the sales manager. I sucked. Nobody taught me how to manage. Right? So if you have a turnkey operation, you learn to create time to work on your business to continue this process of adding systems. I have a system in every department. Last year, we were up 83% from the year before. And we got one net Better Business Bureau complaint, and it wasn't our fault. The Better Business Bureau sided with us. That means I, I was able to process 83% more business as easily as I did 83% less. And why I'm able to do it this year as we grow. We have a system, all right, that allows me to work on my business and make that system better. The system runs the business. The people run the system so that all you have to do is manage the system. All right, so by implementing this process, you're going to close more sales as we wrap this up. Prices higher than your competition, making you more profitable and make you click it because you had too much caffeine so that you don't get the last part. Even better, you can replicate the process. You have more time to work on your business, yes. So here, here's, if, if you can do it, awesome. I suggest you do it. It works very well uh, if you work it. Okay, getting the information is the easy part. Implementation, you implement it. If you work it, it works. So what we're offering is a semi-customized iPad presentation for selling home improvements up to five iPads. Uh, Color-coded coded slides, green, positive, red, eh, yellow. What do you think, right? So that we can train that physicality that I think is missing in presentations, right? Not what you say, but how you say it. Trial closes in yellow so that your reps aren't feature dumping. I once had a customer say many years ago, listen, John, your product is great, but I drive a Chevy, not a Mercedes. If a customer says that to you, that means you're feature dumping. If you're not tying features to benefits, if you're not tying features to the problems that they told you they had earlier, where they need that, that feature, or feature dumping means you have a Mercedes. There aren't as many Mercedes on the road as there are Chevys and Fords. So this type of presentation with those yellow pre-closes helps your homeowner see it's not a Mercedes. How are you going to get from plan, in other words, when that happened to me, here was my close. Guys, your, your goal to get from plan A to plan B, point A to point B, was you want to save energy costs, right? What in my product is unnecessary to get you from A to B? In other words, you don't need leather seats and a moonroof to get from A to B. You don't need heated seats to get from point A to point B. That's why you bought your Chevy, right? But your point A to point B, where you are now to where you want to go with your product, what feature in my product is equivalent to leather seats and a moonroof and unnecessary to get you from where you are now to where you want to go? And when your homeowners can't think of a reason, that means you did a good job tying those features to the benefits. That's the importance of the yellow pre-close in your presentation that we have with ours. 15-slide company story, your Better Business Bureau, your insurance, all your awards, you're active in the community. We put that in there uh, for about 15 slides to make sure that your company presents itself well. Uh, price conditioning to ensure that your prospects, your prospect is surprised you weren't higher. Oftentimes I deliver a price, I, you, know, you still get one of these, but you're like, yeah, that, that's, that's a little lower than I thought it was going to be. Why? Because I built their perception of value up. Okay. Plus, slide-by-slide -slide training notes to make sure your sales team stays on the system. So, uh, products available, these are some of the ones we have at a bank. You know, we, I have a lot of clients, and again, what we do is uh, they're semi-custom. You can make your changes, 
to make it fit, you know, your company profile, etc. But the system, the story, the pre-closing, those are things that are sort of already in a bank of presentations and that we have clients that we've worked with. Now, because we have a bank of core presentations, if you'd like us to do it for you, the investment is $64.95 because we have a bank of core presentations. If you guys want, somebody does something that we don't have a bank a core presentation for, it's quite a bit more because it does take a lot of time. But because we have so many of these in a the bank, we're able to uh, deliver it at, at that price. Now, currently, I can only commit to seven companies per month. Okay, so if this is something that you think is of interest, that you think would help your business, uh, to get your spot, you can go on to this uh, link here and put down a $250 deposit. It's first come, first serve. Um, now, what that $250 deposit does is it holds your spot to give me time to give you a call to go over everything with you to make sure it's for you. Again, I don't need the money. The revenue stream is nice. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not doing this for charity. But it's very important to me that you fully know what you're getting into and that this is the right fit for you. And if it's not, we give you the $250 right back. If it is, then what we do from there is we do half down, half of the, uh, the presentation is completed, less your deposit. All right. Um, now, we offer some fast action bonuses because, you know, we prepped for this presentation and, you know, that first month, the first seven companies to fill that up sooner than later. Um, we can offer you some incentives. One, we'll give you $500 off the presentation. Okay. The other thing we'll do is we'll throw in our uh, English Angle on Sales Selling System training manuals, which is basically, and guys, I want to say this too, our step one, which is commonly known as the introduction, we actually put in that first step how leads are generated. One of the biggest mistakes we make with salespeople while we're training them is we don't tell them what we're saying when we're generating leads. So when they knock on the door in here, I don't know why you're here. I told them I didn't have the money for a couple of years. People don't know how to handle that. So we have how to handle all of that in our step one. And we take you right through the process all the way to buttoning up the sale to make sure that we, you know, we, we write as strong an order as possible. So online on my website, that's a $995 value. We, we throw that in there for you as well. So because we have a bank of core presentations, fast action, $500 off plus the training manuals, you're looking at $59.95. Um, the thing you guys got to ask yourself, right? There's two reasons not to do this. One, you don't think it works. Two, you don't think you'll use it. Okay? I will just say this here. If you can organize your salespeople, if you can deliver a step-by-step, -step, A, will it make training easier for you or your sales manager? Okay? Once you have your salespeople memorized, if they're on an iPad where as they tap it, information comes up so that homeowners don't read ahead. They're only focused on what the representative is saying. Will that result in more people wanting what you have, right? If the answer is yes, then that means they can't help but, you know, raise it up, uh, um, raise up your closing ratio. So the way we look at this is if you could sell one job because of this, then I'm undercharging, all right? But at the end of the day, we want to make sure it's affordable. We want to make sure you get the word out. Um, if you work it, it works. So customize uh, iPad. Yep. Hey, John. Yep. Let me just jump in here real quick. I mean, the yep. part of the reason why we do this with John, and um, I've referred, I, I don't know how many clients um, to John, and they're all thrilled. I mean, once they get the sales presentation, they're thrilled. The idea here is, and, and why we called the webinar what we did, the sales presentation system, system, your true key to uh, freedom, growth, and, and um, profits is because this is such a core critical component inside of a home improvement business and is the one that, it, it's the one that can hurt you the most. Um, and so, because you're out there producing leads, producing leads, they're getting expensive, more expensive every day, every year. Um, by you giving out, I mean, Matt, you issue 10 leads to a salesperson, you've just given them almost $4,000, right? And that's risky. That's risky. They need to bring back, you know, a nice chunk of money in order for that to be profitable for you. That's the one side of it. The other side of it is, is that in business, and this is, and John has done this, I mean, I'm, from where, when I first met John, 
had you told me that I'd be having this conversation with him and I'd be introducing him to my clients, to my people as the poster boy for processes and systems and how to free yourself up from the business, I would have told you you're out of your flipping mind because there's not a chance in hell that this guy can ever pull that off because there was absolutely no evidence of it when I first met him. But to his credit, he got sick and tired of being sick and tired and he boom, he did something about it. He does he works hard. I mean, don't, you know, don't don't take all of what he tells you, you know, to mean that he's kicking up his feet, you know, six days a week doing absolutely nothing. He can do absolutely nothing, but he's still, you know, he's a hustler. That's that's you know, that's that's what he does. But the reason that we're bringing this to you is because if you want a system that will deliver predictable results in the sales process, this system will do it for you. This system will do it for you. But like John says, if you got to implement it, you are the one that has to execute it. He'll give you the presentation that kills. He'll give you the, the training. He'll give you the scripting for every single slide, regardless of your product, whether it's, you know, I. He's done this for me for roofing clients, for window clients, gutters, um, bathrooms, um, you know, all of it. It works, but you have to, you have to make that commitment that hey, I'm gonna create a system out of sale selling, so that that can free me up, so I'm not having to run leads. Because I was with these guys yesterday, and I'll shut up now, John. But I was with these guys. I was speaking in Chicago on Monday and Tuesday, and um, great, great guys. These the two business partners, and um, we talked about the running leads. How many leads? The 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 one of the partners is still out running leads. And I said, how many leads are you running per month? And I forgot. I think he said twenty was the number. He's running twenty leads a month. So I said, okay. How long does each presentation take? Oh, they're a couple hours. But then how long does it take to get there and to get back? That adds another two hours. So 20, they're running 20 leads, each one on average four hours, 80 hours. I said, you realize that's two like full working weeks a month where you're out running leads. And so, and that's time that you're not getting to spend on the important uh, job of growing the business, of you know, of increasing profitability, of bringing on people that can free you up. So anyway, so I just I wanted to throw that in there. Um, by the way, I'm I'm going to do John before you do a, your wrap up here and we close out. Um, let me just do a quick poll for everybody that is on. Um, who is interested in who would like to work with John to create a presentation for your company? Go ahead and just quickly answer. Um, yes, I'm in. Maybe I need more information. Just, you know, we'll get you more information. No, I sell enough jobs already. Um, just let us know. I see. Uh, only about a third of you have voted. I'll leave it open a little bit. Yeah, I want to just throw in two, Brian, real quick. That the way we yeah. do this, what inspired this really, is the replication of what I'm doing here. So the presentations that we're, we're creating are made in the image of my company in Connecticut. In other words, if I was selling your window, your side, and your gutter protection in my business with my system that are giving the results I'm getting, what would that presentation have to look like if I'm going to sell it myself? So these presentations are created in the image of what I'm doing here as opposed to, you know, something entirely different. So that's why I say people watching are getting better results and they're making their money. You know, there's no point in doing anything drastic. Hopefully they got something out of this, this webinar. But yeah. if they're not getting those results, they're not as profitable. I mean, again, it's, it's, it's kind of like having your salespeople come sell here based on the system. That, that's what we're creating and, and hopefully they are going to implement once they get it. Yeah, great. All right, I'm going to close the poll down in a second. 
Uh, those of you that have not voted, uh, go in real quick, hit the poll, and I'm gonna I'm gonna shut it down. Um, Lamont, uh, welcome. It's already made the deposit. Um, John will be reaching out to you later today. AJ um, already made the deposit. Um, we'll be reaching out to you. Um, these are just in the private message. I, I, I don't know how many other people have uh, grabbed the uh, grab the thing. Let me close out the poll. And uh, John, go ahead and wrap us up. Well, I mean, that's pretty much, you know, where the, the meat of what we're talking about. So everybody, you know, again, they were generous with their time for uh, watching. Hopefully it helped. My question is, are there any questions? I mean, does any, did anybody put anything in the question box that I can answer? No, I, I've actually been private messaging. You see me. Oh, if I'm, okay. I've been distracted okay. a little bit. It's, I've been private messaging people as, you, uh, as you've been presenting. And um, I think I've answered... Uh, if anybody else has a question, just by all means put it in the box. Yeah. If you have anything for John, I've been the one that's answering up until now. I mean, as far as a wrap up, just you know, the, the, the package we're offering is a custom iPad presentation, color coded to get delivered with the right message, uh, right emotion, with training manuals, so it's delivered with the right messaging, a built-in slide by. -slide. Sure that we're raising your customers' expectations of what a quality installation would be. Uh, again, slide by slide notes you mentioned, um, and a ten-step selling system. The thing that's not up here that we're also doing is we created a how-to. So once people get their presentation, you're going to get basically a, a training manual for the training manual. This is how you want to implement this into your system. Because as I mentioned, getting the information is easy. Giving the information is easy. Um, implementation, people need guidance on. So what we do is uh, we have uh, like direction step by step how you would implement this and basically it's what I did now that I have a system how do I get it into the business so that I can get these results we send that along with it uh, as well and as you we mentioned before the first nine to fill up that first month we'll get the, 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 the savings and by the way that document that document is worth its weight in gold yeah, our goal is to make sure you don't just get it, but here's how I implement it. Because like I said, that, that was one of my struggles when I was trying to grow. I had a bunch of ideas. Where do you start? So we're going to make sure that you guys are equipped to implement it to make sure that um, we get you on, on the road much quicker. All right. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome, Todd. Thanks for being here. And Lamont, that we are on. Awesome. I'm just looking through all the comments. Yes, great, Lamont. Um, talk to uh, talk to John. He'll help you out with your with your questions. Um, all right, John. Um, we went over a little bit today, um, but good stuff. Always enjoy having you. Uh, having you on. Um, I think that's it. I don't see any more questions, any more or comments. There are still people hanging out with us. I mean, I, I don't have to leave for nine minutes. So uh, if anybody has anything else, uh, we can say. Um, all right. So uh, we'll wrap it up. Thank you, everybody. Hopefully this was of value to you. Thanks, John. Uh, see y'all later. Have a great day. Thank you.